Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to talk about compacting and repairing your database and why it's important. Today's question comes from Patrick in Miami, Florida, a gold member. Patrick asks, my database has only a few thousand records in it, but it's approaching one gigabyte in size. What can I do to make this smaller? Well, Patrick, there's a feature in Microsoft Access called Compact and Repair. Now the repair part of it will fix any problems in your database, but the compact part helps to keep those problems from forming in the first place. As you add and delete records in your database, little gaps are formed between them. Let's say you've got a table with four records in it, all right, Joe, Bill, Sue, and Alexander. Now as I've talked about in previous videos, Access does a really good job of not wasting any extra space inside of that text field. However, if you delete Sue's record now, you've got a gap there. Access just leaves it. It marks it deleted, but the data still sits there. That's sometimes how, like, when you delete a file on your hard drive, you can still undelete it. Access doesn't reclaim that space. It just sits there marked deleted. And when you add your next record, it gets added onto the end of the table. So as you add and delete, add and delete, add and delete, you get these gaps, and that space doesn't get reclaimed. So if you add... 200 megabytes worth of records and delete a hundred of them and then add another hundred megabyte of records now you've got 300 megabytes of storage space wasted in your database that's why compacting your database is important because access will go through get rid of all that space from all of those deleted records and now you're left with a fresh database file that's got no empty spaces in it no gaps this will keep your database nice and small and efficient and of course, a small database is a fast database, both on your computer, if you're the only one using it, and if it's on a network. If you've got to go over a network, Access has to transmit all that data back and forth, back and forth. Big files means slow load times. Access can also accumulate some junk over time. If you don't compact the database regularly, you'll notice it just slowly gets bigger. There's index files and temporary objects and access doesn't always clean up after itself automatically so a compact and repair once in a while will get rid of all that junk the repair end of things when you do a compact and repair can sometimes fix small problems before they become big problems sometimes you're especially long text fields they have a bad uh, uh, reputation of getting corrupted and sometimes access can fix a little problem before it becomes a big problem and you lose a lot of data in older versions of access as I mentioned earlier um, access when you do a compact and repair would actually get rid of wasted space between your files if you had like if you had phone numbers that are 10 digits long stored in a 255 character long text field it would get rid of all that extra space but new versions of access don't have that problem anymore now how often to compact it depends on your usage me personally I'm the only one that uses my database in my office my customer database got all my course information in it I compact maybe once a week the max size of all of my database files together is about a gigabyte and I've got multiple split databases and I've got a little routine that I run and it takes about 10 minutes if you've got a database you're using on a network with a bunch of people you got to make sure that everybody's kicked out of the database and it depends on how fast your database files are growing keep an eye on them over the course of a week and see how big they're getting compact them down and note what their file size should be and then watch it after a week and see how big it's getting. You may only need to compact once a month. Newer versions of Access are really good about keeping the database file small. Essentially, the more people using it and the more you're adding and deleting records and creating those holes, that determines how often you'll have to compact and repair. Okay, how to perform a compact and repair. Always make a backup first. Let me repeat that for those in the back. Always make a backup first. Make a manual backup. I know you probably have a nightly backup routine. Make a manual backup of any file before you compact it. I've seen the compact and repair process ruin the database file, believe it or not. I've seen it happen. Now, granted, that was an older version of Access, maybe 10 years ago, but still. The database seemed to be running fine. I did a compact and repair, and it stopped working. <laughs> and I had to go pull teeth to get it to work right. <laughs> And of course, I say this a lot, but make sure you have daily backups, a weekly backup, a monthly backup. So if you realize you had database problems that were in, that crept into your database two months ago, you can go back and get them 
and restore from those files. Don't just keep three nights of backups. That's not good enough. Next, make sure you have exclusive access to the database. Make sure no one else is logged in. All right, you have to be the only one in the database to compact and repair it. So if this is the database that your whole network runs on, uh, do it when you know on a Sunday when no one's working. Doing this is as easy as opening up the database, going to Database Tools, Compact and Repair. Just open up the database. If you want to bypass the startup form, remember you can hold down that Shift key when you open the database up. It'll bypass whatever startup you've got going on. Database Tools, Compact and Repair. That's it. Access will actually copy your database objects into a new database file and then delete the old one and rename it for you automatically so you get a fresh, clean file. There is a compact on close option. I personally don't use it. I don't like it, but it's there if you want to use it. It's under file and then options under current database. And then here's compact on close. And basically whenever you close this database file, access will do a compact and repair. Now, if you've got a small database, you know, a couple megs, whatever, nothing really major, sure, fine, do a compact on close, no big deal. But if you've got a big database, if your database is, you know, 500 megs a gigabyte or bigger, it's going to take a while to compact. So that's why I don't usually do it on close. Plus, like I said, unless you're doing a lot of adding and deleting, adding and deleting, adding and deleting, you really don't have to compact all that often. You know, once a week is usually fine for most access databases. And compacting on close just slows you down. And it, it could take, you know, depending on the speed of your computer, or if you're doing it over a network, it could take a while. That actually brings up my next point. I don't recommend that you compact over a network. All right, copying files and stuff like that over the network wire. I recommend what you should do is copy the database files down to your local workstation, compact them there, and then copy them back up again. It's just less of a chance of any kind of file corruption. Yeah, I, I compact over my network all the time, but it's just me. I've got three computers here in my office, and i got a server and two different workstations. And sure, but I don't have to worry about someone else accidentally trying to access it while I'm in the middle of compacting it and all that stuff. So especially if you're in a network situation where you got 10, 20 other people on this database, copy the files down, take them offline, do the compact, and then copy them back up again. Yes, you can compact with VBA code, and I will show how in the extended cut of this video. There's basically one line of code you can put in your database to have it compact and repair. And you can have a database compact and repair a different database file, which is what I show in the video. This way you could make one master database that will then go and compact and repair all your backend split databases. And that actually brings up my next point is consider splitting your database. If you've got a big database file, if, you, if your database file is approaching that two gigabyte limit, you may want to consider breaking it up into multiple backend tables. You got your front end that's got your forms and your reports and your queries, and then your back end has your tables in it. Well, if that back end file is getting big, if it's getting close to two gigabytes, you may want to break that up into multiple back, back end files. Have one for customers, have one for orders, have one for order details. All right, I've got all my big tables in their own database file because the, the, it helps you bypass that limit. Remember, it's two gigabytes per file. So you can have multiple files. There's some drawbacks. You lose things like referential integrity, but by and large, it's good to keep your databases small, keep the files small. They, they perform better. It's less traffic going over the network too. And if you want to learn more about splitting your database, I've got lessons on that too. I'll put links in the description below the video. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier is that in older versions of Access, the tables themselves, if you didn't specify the right field sizes, could cause wasted space in the database. That's no longer true. I actually did some testing uh, on my own, and with, even without compacting, Access is about 99% efficient. Most of the wasted space that comes in a database is because of deletions of those records. I actually ran, I actually built a database to test this, I built two databases. One actually runs the other one. Um, I tested short text, long text, multiple different numbers of records, multiple field sizes. And pretty much after you add records and compact it, in almost every case, once you get over a certain size, obviously, access is 98, 99% efficient. The smaller ones is because the database itself has some overhead. So my, my database empty, as you can see, was 
442k. So if I only added a thousand one byte records, it only added a little bit extra, so it wasn't as efficient. But as you got up here to a 160 megabyte database file, it's 99.99% efficient. And I did, did this with uh, 255 character fields. I did it with some long text, right? Some random values. So compacting was was dead on. So Access keeps a pretty good storage of your data without even needing to compact it. The problem again is when you start adding deleted records into the mix. And I tested that too. I added uh, 100 megabytes of files, deleted them or of records, 100, 100 megabytes of records, deleted them, and then added another 100 megabytes and the database file was 200 megabytes. So that's definitely, I tested that myself too. Now, if you want to learn more like if you want to learn the craziness behind all the testing that I did to generate that data, the extended cut for members has lots of goodies in it. It's about three hours long. It's me going crazy. I just sat down yesterday and just started doing this just as a uh, kind of a test. I, I get a bunch of questions from people. And, you know, when I get a bunch that are kind of all related together, like I got this one, I got the one about text file sizes. Uh, I got the one about short versus long text. Um, and you know, it, it, I start to see a theme here. And I'm like, I'm going to do all these together and, and, and build a database and test all this stuff. I learned a certain way of building things back in the 90s when Access was pretty new and it didn't do a lot of the stuff it does now. So I kind of got used to it being that way. And, you know, sometimes things change and you got to stay up to date. And I like to be the one that actually tests this stuff myself to make sure I don't like just reading it in a book. I like to get in there and, you know, open up the hood and get my hands dirty. But I built two databases, one that actually you put the, the counter in, you put, say, I want this many records, I want you know, each record to be this big, and it just adds them, and then the other database controls that one. So it'll open it up. So I show you how to open up another database. I show you how to do a sleep function so you can wait. Um, wait for that database to exit. Compact the database when it's done. Right. Read its file size, how big did it get. Um, read and write text files because I use a text file to control the other database. I don't want to actually write to the database itself and put data in the tables because that might affect the outcome. So I use a, t a separate text file. So I'll show you how to read and write text files. Um, delete and rename files, of course. And I show you record sets, which is what I use to actually add the records to the database. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, a lot of me pulling my hair out because I'm, I'm testing and experimenting with stuff too. But if you want to see the, the madness behind building a crazy database like this, then uh, it's for my member, my silver members and up. How do you become a member? Well, you click on that join button right below the video on YouTube and you'll get access to my extended cut tech helps. So I've got a lot of them now. Been doing this for what, two months? So they're, they're growing. I try, to, I try to release at least a couple new ones every week. Click on join, you'll see a list of all the different membership options. Silver members and up get access to all of the tech help extended cuts. But don't worry, I'm gonna keep releasing these free tech help videos too. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making them. Make sure, though, that you like it. And if you think someone that you know will enjoy it, click on that share button. And don't forget to subscribe. If you want to get notif notifications whenever I release a new video, click on that little bell icon. Check down below. Click on that show more, and you'll see some links down there that'll open up and show you other resources. Like I'll put a, a link down there to my split database video. And if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, it's three hours long. It's free. It's on YouTube. It's on my website. It covers all the basics. And if you like that, Level 2 is just $1. And it's free for members. Want to see your question answered in a video like this? Visit my Tech Help page. Okay, that's all. Thanks for learning with Access Learning Zone. And we'll see you next time.